Chapter 6, Learning Objective 6. Calculate cost of goods sold and merchandise inventory using specific identification, first in, first out, or FIFO, and weighted average costful assumptions under a periodic inventory system. The periodic inventory system does not maintain detailed records that calculate cost of goods sold each time a sale is made. Instead, when a sale is made, this journal entry is made where there is a debit to accounts receivable and credit to sales. Note that no entry is made to record cost of goods sold and to reduce merchandise inventory as is done under the perpetual inventory system. All purchases and expenses are recorded in the general ledger account, Purchases. A physical inventory count is conducted at the end of the year. An amount for ending inventory is calculated based on the count, and the valuation of the items in inventory and cost of goods sold is calculated in the income statement based on this total amount. The periodic inventory system income statement format can also be a little different as shown here. See how that instead of a single line for cost of goods sold, there's a calculation that discloses the opening inventory of $1,000, adds the purchases of $5,000 to arrive at goods available for sale of $6,000, and then deducts the ending inventory of $2,000 based on the inventory count to arrive at cost of goods sold of $4,000. This information could also be included in the notes to the financial statements instead of directly on the face of the income statement to save space. Even under the periodic inventory system, however, inventory cost flow assumptions need to be made when purchase prices change over time, as in a period of inflation. Different inventory cost flow assumptions produce different costs of goods sold and ending inventory values, just as they did under the perpetual inventory system. Under the periodic inventory system, cost of goods sold and ending inventory are determined as if the sales for the period all took place at the end of the period. Our original example using units assumed there was no opening inventory June 1st, 2023, and that the purchases were made as follows. When recorded in the general ledger T account purchases an income statement account, these transactions would be recorded as follows. The sales of four units are all assumed to take place on June 30th, and ending inventory would then be counted at the end of the day on June 30th. One unit should be on hand, and it would be valued as follows under the various inventory cost flow assumptions. Specific identification would have an ending inventory value of $4, FIFO $5 based on the last item purchased, and weighted average $3. These values would be used to calculate cost of goods sold and gross profits on the income statement as shown here. Notice that for all three methods, the sales, opening inventory, purchases, and goods available for sale amounts are exactly the same. The difference is in the ending inventory, which results in different cost of goods sold and different gross profits, and ultimately the contribution to net income as a result. Note that these results are the same as those calculated using the perpetual inventory method and assuming all sales take place on June 30th, using specific identification, FIFO, and weighted average cost flow assumptions. The ending inventory amount will be recorded in the accounting records when the income statement accounts are closed to the income summary at the end of the year. The amount of the closing entry for ending inventory is obtained from the income statement. Using this example and assuming no other revenue or expense items, the closing entry to adjust ending inventory to actual under each cost flow assumption would be as shown here. Regardless of the cost flow assumption, the same accounts are debited and credited. Specifically, merchandise inventory is debited to record the value of the ending inventory. Sales with a credit balance of $40 is debited to close that account out. And the sum results in a credit to income summary. Note that the merchandise inventory account is not closed to zero because it's a balance sheet account, not an income statement account. And this entry has the effect of making sure the correct value of the inventory is carried on the balance sheet.